let's talk about coalescing filters, which are a type of uh, filtration method which is quite effective in removing water from oil. They operate on a very similar principle to simple water separation, right? So the idea with water separation, if you have a whole bunch of free water that's, uh, let's say, for example, in an oil reservoir, what you're aiming for is for all those little water droplets to coalesce into one larger water droplet, right? The reason we want this is because, as we know from Stokes's law, larger water droplets are going to fall through the oil at a much faster rate which means that you get faster water separation and ultimately what you want is in the end a continuous layer of water that's going to sit at the bottom of the reservoir so you can pull out the drain plug and therefore drain off that water now one caveat of course if you're working with a polyethylene glycol then that water is actually going to sit on the surface because pags are slightly more dense than water so then we come on to coalescing uh, technologies so there are really two broad brackets when we talk about coalescers. So there are mechanical and electrostatic coalescers, right? So let's discuss the mechanical ones first. And they rely on this principle called the wettability of a surface. Now, you already understand wettability. You intuitively have seen it before. So if you've ever seen water droplets on the surface of a leaf, that relates to the fact that the surface of the leaf is what we call hydrophobic. It's the same reason why you would wax the surface of your car, right? You don't want water to wet the entire surface, metal surface and cause things like rust and corrosion. You want it to bead up and then roll off. So the way that water droplets form on surfaces is related to two different competing forces. So let's consider, first of all, a water droplet on a surface. And we can talk about the forces of, firstly, cohesion, which is the internal forces within the droplet. Right? So in the case of water, that is, how strongly do the water molecules attract to each other? The second predominant force that you have is an adhesive force, which relates to adhesion. So that is the forces between the water molecules and the surface that it lays on. Right? So as an example, if you were to put wax on the hood of your car, wax is generally a, a paraffinic type molecule. So it has a long hydrocarbon tail, which is hydrophobic, right? So it looks very much like a base oil molecule or a PAO molecule. So in this instance, what we would say is that the cohesive forces of water, which remember are hydrogen bonds, are much stronger than the adhesive forces between water and wax molecules. As a result, water wants to stick to itself much more than it wants to stick to the wax. And so in order to minimize the amount of contact area with the wax, it forms a spherical droplet on top of the wax. Now, if we were to take that wax layer away, what changes? Well, the adhesive forces increase because a metal surface um, has higher surface activity. What that generally means is that charge sits on the surface of metals, therefore the polar molecules in water are attracted to them to a certain extent. We see this, for example, in surface additive chemistries, right, where surfactants are attracted to metal surfaces. And as a result, because cohesion and adhesion are a little bit more equal in this instance, what you see is that the water doesn't form a spherical droplet. It tends to spread across the surface of the metal. So that is the difference between something which can be water wet versus not water wet. Now let's put it into the context of how you would apply this principle to filtering out water. So let's say, for example, I have a wax type substance, right? And I'm going to pass oil through that substance, right? So remember this, if, if it's like a wax, water doesn't want to touch it, but oil does. So as we pass the oil through it, these materials are going to be oil wet. So not water wet, they're going to be oil wet. So a certain amount of oil is going to cling to those surfaces, kind of like a film thickness, right, in, in, in bearings. Now, if we can make the capillaries between these materials small enough, then that surface film is going to form one sort of continuous layer that passes through, right? So the water wet, sorry, the oil wet areas are going to connect up. Now, what does that mean? 
that means that if you have water droplets passing through, they have no opportunity to get through this gap, right? And as more of them come through, eventually you are going to get these water molecules, sorry, the, the water droplets to start to coalesce into larger molecules. And of course, as they do so, now they're going to drop according to Stokes's law. Now we can sort of increase the effectiveness of these coalesces simply by stacking way more of them together. So that is the principle on which they operate. So they have uh, a basically a mesh which uh, is oil wet and therefore in some senses repels water which then wants to mechanically coalesce with itself. Okay, so that is mechanical coalescers. Now let's move on to electrostatic coalescers. Now these operate on a slightly different principle. So effectively what happens is I want to move these two water droplets closer to each other. So one of the ways that we can do that is by applying a, a, an electric field across these materials, right? So the oil isn't really going to be affected by the electric field because it's relatively nonpolar. However, the water is, right? So it is going to end up having a sort of a negative end and a positive end, and it's going to elongate those uh, spheres, those droplets. Now, all of a sudden, not only are they physically closer together, but now there are, uh, you know, electric attractive forces between these. And this is going to cause these two droplets to be far more likely to coalesce into one larger droplet and therefore, again, fall according to Stokes's law. Okay, so that is our coalescer systems. Remember, there is mechanical, which operates on the process of wettability, and there are electrostatic ones, which use um, charge and electric field to bring these uh, water, well, water droplets closer together.